Blitzkrieg Burning Horizon is the third installment of the Blitzkrieg series of real-time strategy games. It's more like a standalone expansion pack than an actual full-sized game. It was released one year after the original title in 2004. Many spin-offs have also been made on the same engine. While couples are sharing the World War II settings, there has been a few set in somewhat extremely forgotten by game developer time of history. Notably the Cold War, more specifically the Cuban Missile Crisis. But Burning Horizon campaign is exclusively concentrated on the German general Erwin Rommel. You start off with the invasion of Belgium all the way to France to knock it out as they did early in the war, then you are sent into Africa with the Africa Corps against the British troops there. Finally you will be sent back to the mainland for a final stand against the Allies invasion. Then just as Romo you will die for some <laughs> reasons because you disagree with the Führer. The game also provides a few scenarios set all across the world. The campaign shows well the challenge the Germans had to go through, especially in North Africa. Your limited supplies is a strong handicap when the enemy has seemingly endless map. The battles play out like in any other Blitzkrieg game. You start out with a few soldiers under your control, you'll have to complete set objectives and more often than not you'll need to use extreme caution and make your tinkering box work hard to limit your own casualties. The game happens to be extremely challenging, you'll be put against great odds and will need to cleverly think and get a good tactical visceration to overcome the enemies. But I find the artery to be remotely too powerful as you can easily raise down the whole map to nothing, quite disappointing that such a simple strategy has never been patched. If you do play fairly though, you'll have to also use the terrain and props to your advantage. Trees, bushes, fences, houses, everything can be used to obscure the enemy vision and deploy your troops and strategic points for a coordinated assault. You can also use the in-game timer to either reduce the game speed to a tenth the normal or increase it tenfold. Optionally, you can also pause the game to tinker a bit and give order to be executed when unposed. One thing I dislike slightly is that you have armored core units. These units will stick with you mission after mission as long as they survive. The only problem is that I am quite reserved individual and will often attempt to preserve these units at all cost, logically, but they seem to always inexplicably get themselves between a rock and a hard place as soon as you use them. Even though they are armored, they tend to be on the weak side and can easily get blasted away by ground troops if you take your eyes off them for a single moment. So if you intend to preserve them, more often than not, you'll simply sit them back home to hold out in safety. But you'll get the order problem with these core units, is if you don't use them, they do not gain experience that will be extremely valuable in the later stage of the game. Now the graphics are very acceptable, although the game was released in a time where isometric games were losing grounds quickly in favor of three-dimensional games engines, they still are surprisingly comfortable to look at, except maybe for the planes that look totally out of place. I also modified the game files to allow a larger resolution than permit, as in the base game we only have a couple of 4x3 ratios and 16x9, but nothing near what modern monitor can offer. Sadly, doing so also causes massive performance issues during normal gameplay, so we have to reassign the priority given to the game and the task manager every time we play, and strangely enough, we have to reboot the computer if it has been running for a long time, which, quite honestly, I think everybody leaves the computer running 24-7. I do find it a little bit odd though that we have to do so much fiddling around to play a game that was released the same year as Windows Vista. The music is pleasing to listen but becomes slightly repetitive as we progress along the campaign. 
and there isn't anything of note to mention on top of that. The sound effects are decent, although the voices are a little bit subpar. Strangely enough, there is a couple of scenarios map located in the Pacific Theater, and the Japanese soldiers speak in German. A bit odd. Now, while Blitzkrieg has never got mainstream attention with strategy games players, it's still a magnificent example of what can be done with a little bit stretch of the imagination. Burning Horizon focused heavily on Erwin Rumel campaign and does so brilliantly. If you have any interest in tactical real-time strategy games, then this is definitely something that can grab your attention for a little while. Especially if you grab the Anthology Edition with the base game and two expansion packs. Keep in mind that the game is difficult at first until you find some reasonable exploitable tactics. You will also need to take some time to adjust the resolution and assign the game to single core to have a somewhat playable experience on today's standards. Overall, the game is enjoyable, especially for the low price you can find it on sale nowadays. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review and if you did, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more. See you next time.